originally from Pittsburgh. Yeah. And uh, what brought you out here? Making wine. I, I uh, grew up knowing I wasn't going to college, I was going to go to uh, work in a steel mill. I was offered uh, scholarships all over the place and well, football. Okay. And what was your position? What are you, what are you playing? Uh, defensive tackle. Although there were times when Coach Paterno thought I was a drawback, drinking too much wine, chasing too many cheerleaders. I did my doctorate at Davis in fermentation science. Three. 301 college units, <laughs> completed a coursework for two doctors, one in genetics and one in enology, and no PhD. Now that's an underachiever. The name Eberly is Schwaben. I'm German on my father's side and Polish on my mother's side. And in um, farmer German, and Eber, E-B-E-R, is the boar and the L-E is an affectionate or slang diminutive. My name translates as the little boar, the son of the boar, right. you little pig you. Buck the truck. And Buck is um, my winemaker, Ben Mayo, who's just a spectacular winemaker, but he has way too much time on his hands. Every year has a theme. Right. And if you look in the cellar, you'll see hanging from the rafters these flags. Right. Pirate flag, SpongeBob, right. NASCAR. Every year, Buck gets to do it. That is the ninth incarnation. Ben's the guy. <laughs> and uh, I mean, serious, that truck someday will collapse under the weight of the paint. I was instrumental with uh, three other guys in drawing up what is now the Paso Robles Appalachian. I uh, introduced Syrah as a varietal to the United States, not just Paso Robles. Planted the first Syrah vineyards in 74. I have mentored and spun off about 10 wineries in the region. People started, as I got older, referring to me as you know, the grandfather, or the father, the grandfather, and the godfather, and the godfather sort of stuck. Um, I think it's rather pretentious, and I, I really feel a little awkward about it. Because I, you know, I didn't do anything, and everyone says, oh, you know, he did all this, you know, he put Paso on the map, eh. What I did was I did what I needed to do for my business. Right. And if it put, helped put Paso on the map, great. I mean, I needed to have Paso on the map mm -hmm. for me to be successful. Paso wines, not only are they good when they're young, they age beautifully. They, they uh, Paso wines, I think, age better than any other, than red wines from any other appellation in the state. And I will put older Paso wines up against wines from any place in the state and they do spectacularly. Scores in the press are, um, you know, in the Spectator, the wine enthusiast, uh, Robert Parker, right. are really important, particularly um, when you're selling wine out into the trade. Somebody comes in and sees, geez, that one got a 93, I'll take that one versus that one that has an 88. Now, in reality, the difference is not measurable. I mean, you're talking something that is so subjective and trying to put an objective uh, uh, score to it. But an American knows a gold medal. And I have found that if I win a gold medal on a wine and we announce it and we hang the ribbon on that wine, the sales, the increased sales on that wine the first week will pay for all the costs for entering all seven competitions. You know, my whole industry is based on bullshit. And I'm really good at it. And um, I was, even when I wasn't getting the good scores, the wines were good. And I had the ability to get things sold.